Solitary is a great episode, and it's also the beginning of island cartography. When this episode aired in November 2004, Lost fans went haywire over the screenshots showing us the island. In later years we got high definition pictures of it from Comic Con and Lost the Auction, and have a much clearer picture in analyzing the maps. In this episode we get to see a large trek across the island. First I will only focus on Sage's journey, which consists of a lot of off-screen travel. Then I will deal with the events concerning our survivors. And at the end of the video I'll break down Rousseau's maps. Saeed is ashamed of what he did to Sawyer and goes southwards to map the island. He goes past the beach where Sawyer was skin dipping in the previous episode. Then he moves to the rocky area we saw in the pilot. The rocks will continue because he ventures into some interesting lava formations. The islands of Hawaii are volcanic islands with various lava flows that make some visually intriguing rock formations. Most of these locations are filmed near Coco Head Crater or the, pardon my pronunciation, Kaihuakapua. It's really telling that the island of Lost is modeled after the island of Oahu. After passing the rocky beach, Said comes to this lava formation, into this small beach in between the lava rocks. Since he went during sunset, he probably found a camping spot in this area. This area is where Desmond found the bird in season 3 episode 12, Par Avion, filmed at Cockroach Cove, otherwise known as Halona Beach Cove. Said comes to this lava formation, which we'll later see in the season 1 finale. This is part of the China Walls coastline. The next area underneath the crater is quite dangerous. Trust me, I've been there. It's a steep and gigantic wall with cliffs and caves with the waves crashing into enormous heights. The area is called Spitting Cave. Cliff jumpers have died here, so it's not exactly a playground. Said is probably taking a route on the top here. He's too far to witness the ladder at the end of this cliff. This ladder leads directly down to the Cave of Names. Said continues through the unique geological formation, showing off the volcanic past of the island. In one of the inlets resides the Elizabeth, Desmond's sailboat. It is behind this inlet wall. Said continues and passes the place we'll see in Season 2, Episode 6, Abandoned. They said their people were on the beach. If we keep walking... The beach goes into a peninsula ahead. It may not be possible. This is filmed at Lanai Lookout. Then he comes here. This is an idea that the last map from Lostpedia proposed and I absolutely love it. There is a river here and above it lies a natural stone arch made from erosion over the years. The reason why the last map included in the map is to explain an inconsistency in a trek in the season 3 finale. I'll cover it, but that's going to be in a video in the future. So it continues to this part. The lava rock area continues for a little bit more until it becomes the jungle again. And here's where we have two possibilities. You see, here's the lighthouse, seen in season 6. Jack asks the question we all wondered. It's a lighthouse. I don't understand. How is it that we've never seen it before? I guess we weren't looking for it. In a similar vein, the man in black said that he searched the entire island to find the cave of light, never coming close to finding it. So the two possibilities we have here are 1. Said walked past the lighthouse, but Jacob had cloaked it so that nobody could see it until he wished for it. Or 2. Said ventured into the jungle possibly to make camp and by coincidence he didn't notice it. Maybe it was dark at the time. Now we have caught up with the show. Kate says that it's been two days since Said left. That is approximately the time it takes to walk to the other side of the island. But since Said is mapping the island and going through some uneven terrain, he certainly took his time. Said is sitting on a beach. This was actually filmed on Makulea Beach. The film crew made sure to only show this angle. You see, if the cameras would turn to the other side, we would actually see the plane wreckage. Said follows the cable, lands in Rousseau's trap and is later brought to her shelter. He and Danielle Rousseau talk a lot the next day about her expedition, the others whispering and of her child Alex. When we get to season 5, I will actually make a separate video exclusively on Danielle Rousseau's travels on the island. At some point, a polar bear runs by. We don't see it, but we hear it. Said frees himself and escapes with her maps and Robert's rifle. He meets Danielle again in a standoff and she lets him go. Said ventures through the jungle and hears whispers. Let's backtrack to a day earlier, back to the beach. Easy jackass. You want it easy, quit moaning. I gotta change these bandages. I will try not taking my skin off with him. 
Jack changes Sawyer's bandages. He heads back to the beach. Kate stands in the sand, alone, waiting for Saeed. When night falls, Ethan and Locke go out to hunt. They find some luggage and bring it to the caves. Then they'll venture out again to hunt some rabbit. The next day, Hurley builds a golf course. Charlie, Michael and Jack come to the valley to see what all the fuzz is about. Welcome to the first and hopefully last island open. Then they start playing. Charlie and Hurley against Jack and Michael. Then a red shirt named Sullivan comes by. Jack treated his rash on the back the night before. Rumors spreads around about the golf course. Boone, Shannon and Kate go from the beach to the valley. Dude, I think he stuck it. Lucky, lucky. This thing have a ladies team. Hey. Walt catches up to them, upset that his father left him in the cave alone with Claire. Walt goes back to the jungle later in the day. Sawyer shows up at the golf course. The sun's starting to go down. Walt is with Locke in an open field near Big Tree. He's gonna teach Walt how to throw knives. Now let's go into Rousseau's maps. She made three maps of the island. The crater map, the summit map, and the full island map. The last one is the official one. The one pretty much all of us lost mappers have based our fan maps on, and the one that was featured in the complete collection box set. Although the only difference in the complete collection set is that it's missing Robert Island and Alex Island, as well as the triangle on the map and the atolls on the western part of the island. Since there are hieroglyphics on the map, it could signify that this is an ancient map and Hydra Island splits apart. Maybe after disastrous cork move, or due to natural causes. Another thing I'll mention is that these maps were made in the fall of 2004, at a time where the crew had no idea if they would even be renewed for a second season, or how big of a hit the show was going to be. Notations, drawings, scribbles and measurements, they must be taken with a grain of salt, the further away we go from season 1. The crater map. We saw parts of this map a few times. Here's one that is translated from French to English. It seems to show the crater, which we know is on the south side of the island. There's also an exposed slope. I've added that here. The exposed slope is something I'll get back to in the season 1 finale, because I believe that the characters venture up here on their way to the black rock. Some things don't add up. We have all these rocks in bottom here. Rousseau has not added them in the official map, but they could be so small that they are not noticeable or important enough to put in the big map. In Hawaii, these small rocks exist outside the lava rock areas anyway. Another cool thing is that she made an illustration of the boat. It could be Desmond's boat, which is nestled here, but it doesn't look like a sailboat. The illustration is most likely her boat. We know it crashed on the western part of the island, based on the official map, so this is probably her boat on its way during the storm. Another conflicting part is that she has drawn a lot of jungle and coconut trees. Most of the crater has rocky slopes down to the ocean, because if we compare it with Coco Head crater in Hawaii, it matches up pretty well. It could be due to the resource memory of this place, or that it's not supposed to be a faithful map. This map has also the lyrics to the song La Mer, the summit map. This map was never seen in detail on the show. Just a few glimpses, like when Said was putting together the maps to show the triangle on the map. The translations here are done by Kuasark from Mapping the Island, hyphen enhanced.blogspot.com. All praise to him for doing it. Based on the small islets and coral reefs in the bottom here, you'd think that this is supposed to be the crater seen from above, but the drawing doesn't line up quite well, and she hasn't written crater on it. The reason could be so simple that Danielle drew this from memory after seeing it when their boat sailed along the south side until it slammed into rocks at the west side of the island. Or that this map is showing the island from this angle? You see, Danielle has written 2157 meters on the summit, which is also what she has written on the official map over here. But down here she has written 1837 meters, which is written here on the official map. The shape of the island in the summit map is really small too, so it's not something she has spent a lot of work on to correctly portray the entire island. For all we know, this is just a combination of a lot of things on the island. Not really a faithful map. The cool thing here is that she mentions that there's a bay of sharks. We know that sharks are around the island, or at least one, and she has arrows pointed to the point of the wreck. In the middle she has written basalt flow. That is the result of a giant volcanic eruption, or series of eruptions, that covers large stretches of land or the ocean floor with basalt lava. She has also written down cave of the shipwrecked. That is fascinating. Now the official map. This is the one I've based my map on. The translated version is done by Jean Boe on Lostpedia. All praise to him. 
My biggest change is the obvious one here. Over the course of the show, it seems like the size of Hydro Island has grown larger and larger. Just take a look at this vast mountain range. This is where the show changes course. When they shot Solitary in the fall of 2004, they didn't know that this was going to be a sixth season show where a commercial airplane would land on one of those small islands. By the time we rolled into season 3, the runway they were building looked like one that would fit a small plane, like a drug smuggler's plane. Even the showrunners have said that this is a tiny, tiny island. I love your show, but more and more lately, you guys are insulting our intelligence. A second island? So I guess when Saeed, Jin, and Sun sailed around the island to see where Jack, Michael, and Kate at all were going, they just happened to miss seeing this other island? Or when Jin, Sawyer, and Michael sailed off at the end of season one, I guess they didn't get far enough away to spot the second island? Or when Shannon died and Saeed went off and found the French lady. Any of this ringing a bell? Shall I go on disproving that a second island can even exist? I hope that this will be... Please. I, I hope this will be Ben fooling Sawyer somehow because that would be better than thinking you can insult our intelligence. Wow. I, I, I don't want to insult your intelligence, but at the same time, I would argue that there are there the island that we've been on from the very beginning is very large and it would if you know anything at all about geography it is wildly possible to sail you know 3 quarters of the way around our island without ever seeing a you know tiny a, a tiny, tiny little tiny... island only 2 miles offshore just like the size of Alcatraz Obviously, things change when the new stories emerge. So the biggest discrepancy is that I've enlarged Hydra Island, so it's more in line with the one we see in season 5 and 6. The other discrepancy is this line over here, the transmitter's location. Rousseau has written this text to the west, suggesting that the location of the radio tower is on the western mountain plateau, but I've placed it on the eastern. The reason for it is something I'll come back to in the episode Through the Looking Glass, when we encounter one of the weirdest maps on the show, Ben's map of the radio tower. And since he actually maps a route to the radio tower from the beach camp and from their camp that is actually depicted on the map, I've decided to take Ben's word and not Rousseau. This is also why I've separated both the Black Rock and the radio tower. I know, Rousseau says that the radio tower is up by the Black Rock, but I think her warped sense of the island geography messes us up. I'll come back to it when we go to the Black Rock in the season finale, and why I've placed it closer to the Fort Road statue than to the radio tower. I think the circle she has marked here is supposed to be the Black Rock, not the radio tower. One cool thing is that she's written that the trek is dangerous due to Smoke's approach. Remember, we don't even know what the monster is yet. If we move up, we have the shipwreck's location and the first abandoned camp. The other interesting thing is this mark at the eastern side of the map saying the ruins of unknown origin. It's either the Fort Oil statue, the ruins near the well, or the ruins seen in the brig, or something completely different. I don't think it's the Fort Oil statue. Because when Saeed, Jin, and Sun were sailing, they passed the Fort Oil statue, then the Deco village, and then the Pala ferry dock. Without being in viewing distance of Hydra Island, I think that the Fort Oil statue is on the other side, since Saeed marked one location there when they were on the sailboat. You have Robert Island and Alex Island. Robert Island is the one that is Hydra Island. You also have this cool sighting, the submarine cable of unknown origin. It's actually drawn on the map. What we don't see here is the triangle on the map. I've debated with myself whether or not I should include it. If it still exists, then it should have been visible from the lighthouse. It could be a flat rocky area that is just covered with water as of now. I'm going to say the same thing about the atolls on the western side. They might be much smaller than envisioned, almost submerged after all these years. And in the middle of the island she has written the most dangerous place. This is what Shannon translated to dark territory. Danielle calls it territoire fonds at some point, even though territoire fonds isn't written on the map. I think that the Dark Territory spans a much wider area on the island, which would include places Danielle didn't encounter, such as the Flame, the Sonic Fence and the Barracks. There's a lot of places Danielle didn't even know about. Sometimes I wonder if these maps were even made by her, or that she found them while scouring the Black Rock or any remnants of the US Army and made her own notations on top of them. That's up to the viewer. Now, I'll probably go back to her maps other times, but as of now, hope you enjoyed the analysis. See you in a week.